Hi, so I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we had a nice big mix Cubase project and somewhere late in the process we still want to add a virtual instrument track or maybe a virtual guitar amp track. So we put the virtual instrument or the guitar amp plugin on a new track, start playing and latency rears its ugly head. We basically get so much delay after playing the keyboard or the guitar that it's almost undoable to play in time. Well, let me tell you, there's one magic button in Cubase which can really help out a lot in this case. So let's dive into the intricacies of plug-in delay compensation. Let's go. Now, if you have any experience with Cubase, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? You play your keyboard or your drum pad or your guitar and what you're hearing back on your monitors or in your headphones is slightly delayed and then it's really hard to play. So this delay is called by so-called latency, which is basically the difference between you playing a sound and you hearing the sound, the audio actually coming out of your audio interface so that you can listen to what you are playing. Now there are two major causes of this latency and one is not actually the subject of this video but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. And that's the fact that the buffer in your audio interface is causing this latency. And that's probably the most well-known reason as well. So if you go to studio, studio setup then over here you have your audio system mine is from rme called asio hammerfall dsp and over here you can see that i have an input latency of slightly over 20 milliseconds and an output latency of slightly over 20 milliseconds as well now the only way that you can really change this is by changing the buffer size in the control panel of your audio interface. For me, it looks like this, but depending on which audio interface you have, it might look different. But there's usually a setting for buffer size, and mine is pretty big, 1024 samples. And that's because I have a mixing project with lots of plugins, and I'm not too concerned about latency at this moment into the process, because I'm not really recording anymore at this point. However, if you still want to record something into this project, you can lower the buffer size of your audio interface. For example, set it to 128 or 64 samples, and this will decrease the latency which is displayed over here. And this is one way to, well, decrease the overall latency that you get in your project. But you may need to compromise a bit because if you set the buffer size too low, then you will hear your audio drop out sometimes, and that's of course not what you want. Now, conceptually, how this buffer works is that Cubase basically has to deliver audio samples to your audio interface in a very fast way. If you look at the project settings over here, you can see that this is a 48 kilohertz project, meaning that Cubase has to deliver 48,000 samples to the audio interface every second. Otherwise there will be dropouts. However, since my PC and your MacBook is not really a real-time system, it's pretty hard to guarantee that Cubase can give a 24-bit audio sample to the audio interface all the time. Sometimes it may take a bit longer, sometimes it may go a bit faster. So that's why there's a buffer in between. So Cubase will just fill the buffer and the audio interface will start processing audio samples at a very steady rate from the other side of the buffer and everything is hunky-dory and you will not hear audio dropouts. It's a simplified view of what's happening in reality, but conceptually you can think about it like that. Now this buffer is all nice and fine, but of course this is also what is causing the difference between Cubase actually processing a sample and the sample being output from your audio interface. Now at the moment I'm still talking about latency caused by your audio interface. Let's move to the second reason why you get latency in your project, and that's because of plugins. And sometimes that latency can even be bigger than the latency that your audio interface is causing, because they also need some time for processing the audio which is fed into them. So what gets fed into every plugin may take some time to process and only then will be output by the plugin, causing latency again. Now you can actually see in Cubase how much latency each plugin is causing, because if we go to the mixer, and let's move this a little bit so you can actually see this. If you go to the setup window layout over here, you can see that there's an option here to show the channel latency when you're in the mixer window. And as you can see, Cuba has now added a row in the mixer here, over here, showing the latency of each channel. If we go back to full view, you can see over here that some of those latencies are quite considerable, like 50 milliseconds. If you remember, my audio interface had 20 and 20, so that's less than what these plugins are causing over here. Over here, we have 90 milliseconds of latency on this channel. On the stereo out, we even have 200 milliseconds of latency. And well, let's take one of 90 maybe. If we click this little arrow over here, you can see that we get the channel latency overview. 
So these are the plugins which I have on this channel. And you can see that these three plugins are actually the ones that are causing latency. My UAD PoolTech causing 23.8 milliseconds of latency. The DBX160 causing 1.8 milliseconds of latency. And the Pro L2 causing 64.9 milliseconds of latency for a total latency of 90.5 milliseconds on this channel. Now this is quite considerable because Cubase has so-called plugin delay compensation to make sure that even though there is latency from all of these plugins, all of the audio still stays in sync and arrives together at the stereo out exactly at the moment that it's supposed to arrive. So it basically compensates for all of these latencies on the channels and on the buses by feeding audio earlier to the channels. And it can only do that by delaying audio on the various channels to make sure it all stays in sync and arrives at the output at the same time the way it was meant to. Now in this channel latency overview you can also see these two stars here behind the latencies of these plugins. And that basically means that when we go to the magic button, constrained plugin delay button in Cubase, these plugins will be disabled to make sure that they are not adding latency to the whole chain, which significantly reduces the plugin delay compensation that Cubase has to do. Now before I further show you how to use that button and what impact it has on the channels and the plugins, if you like this video or find it useful at all, please give it a big thumbs up because it really helps to spread this video to more people. You can also subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I post another video. For even more support you can use the super thanks button below the video which is kind of a virtual tip jar or if you're planning to buy anything at one of these stores I have many affiliate links in the description and if you click the link to the store before you make a purchase over there, I will get a small commission without any additional cost to you, which is always highly appreciated. But let's get back to plug-in delay compensation. So let's have a look at where this magic constrained delay compensation button actually is in Cubase. And for that we need to go back to the project view because this is the button over here, constrain delay compensation. And if you don't see that button, you can right click here on your toolbar. And over here you can see that there is a constrained delay compensation which you can turn on so you can see it and apply it. So let's push it and see what actually happens. If we now move back to the mixer view, you can see that a lot of plugins are still enabled, but a lot of other plugins are fully disabled at this moment. All these plugins were on before and these are on buses actually. Also on my stereo out, for example, we had a lot of plugins which caused delay and which were being compensated for by the plugin delay compensation. And they were fully disabled by Cubase because you can see that they are black because if you just disable a plugin, you can see that it turns gray. But these are actually black, meaning that they are fully removed from the audio path so that Cubase doesn't have to take into account that they are actually causing latency, it doesn't have to compensate for it, which means that the total latency in the project will be significantly reduced. And hopefully you will be able to play your virtual instruments or your drum pads or your guitar through a virtual guitar amp with significantly less delay due to latency. And that can really be the difference between I cannot play this part at all and it's very doable. Now what you will also see is that if you enable recording on an audio track, for example, let's say we want to record on this track, which now has a latency of 45.9 milliseconds. But if you enable recording, you see that it disables the plugin, which was causing this 45 milliseconds latency, because now the latency is zero. Again, making it easier to monitor this channel through Cubase, because it has now also reduced the latency caused by the plugin on this channel. Now there's also a special case for certain plugins because this channel, for example, has a smart comp and a Cubase compressor. And if you look at what's causing the latency on this channel, it's the smart comp on insert four, but it's also the standard Cubase compressor. It's not a lot, but it's still two milliseconds. And if I now enable recording, you can see that it only takes out the smart comp and not the Cubase compressor. And that's because when you open the Cubase compressor, you can see that it has a so-called live mode. And if I engage the live mode, you can see that the latency over here just dropped from 45.9 to 43.9. So it basically makes this plugin suitable for live processing so that it does not cause latency anymore. If you now look at the latency overview, you can see that only smart comp 2 is causing latency. So by default, you don't have the live mode on. On. But if you now engage recording while you have constrained delay compensation still enabled, it will leave the Cubase compressor enabled, but in the background it actually turns on the live mode on that compressor so that it is no longer causing latency. You can also see that over here. Again, if you look at the 
channel latency overview. This plugin has a one star behind the latency number here, where this plugin has two stars. Two stars basically means this plugin will be disabled when constrained delay compensation is active. And one star means this plugin has a live button, low latency mode, and that will be enabled when you enable constrained delay compensation. Now, one more good to know thing, you can actually influence which plugins are turned off because maybe you're not so bothered by plugins who do not cause a lot of latency and you just want to leave them enabled. You can actually set a limit on when the plugin should be disabled when you enable constraint delay compensation. And that's in the settings over here, edit preferences. You go to the VST section and you can see over here that there's the delay compensation threshold for recording. For example, if we set this to 30 milliseconds, for example, let's apply it. And if I now again enable plugin delay compensation, let's look at a bus on which we now have disabled plugins here, for example. You can see that this bus now still has some latency because there are a couple of plugins on here which are causing latency less than 30 milliseconds, so they are not turned off by this option now. So remember, that's on the base bus over here. If I now turn back this limit to zero, you can see that now on the base bus, there is no latency anymore because all plugins which are causing latency have been disabled and actually taken out of the audio path. Now, one important thing to not forget is when you're done recording in this special mode with much less latency than usual, you definitely have to make sure that you disable the constraint delay compensation button again, because as you can see, a lot of plugins are disabled on my mix now, so it will not sound the same as before and all your painstaking work to get a nice mix will be disabled for a while. And that's probably not a problem while you're recording, but obviously when you're mixing, you don't want this. So it's back to the project view, disable this, and if we now go back to the project, you can see that all my plugins are enabled again, also on my stereo out, on my mix bus, and everything is back to normal. Cubase is compensating again for the latency within the plugins, so all the audio lines up again, which causes a higher latency for the project in total again, but when you're mixing, that's not so much of a problem. Now, another use case in which latency plays an important role is when you're using external effects in Cubase, and I have a separate video about that, which I will link over here. Check it out, enjoy, See you soon.